It's all in our hands, this life of time It's given to us all it is our final night here on the Queen Mary 2 and it seems so strange to say that because we just boarded the ship yesterday. And this is the late night cocktail cam, a sort of, I don't know, a segment, a tradition that I started where at the end of the night I tell you a little bit more about what has happened during the day. And as you have already noticed on many cruise ships, including here the Queen Mary 2, the lighting for filming YouTube videos in the evening is not so great and I I prefer not to bring some sort of external lighting setup with me when I'm cruising so this is what you get I've only done one other cruise that the, was this short and when I say short I mean we boarded the ship on Sunday we had Monday at sea and Tuesday, tomorrow, it's already over. That was on the Norwegian Jade, and it was exactly the same route from Southampton to Hamburg. So both of them were interesting and fun and uh, valuable in their own ways. We're getting ready for bed here. Marcus is brushing his teeth. Our suitcases have been picked up and swept away from outside in the hallway. It's about midnight. The information that we got here what time does it say? It says that we uh, are allowed to stay in the cabin until 9.50 a.m. And it says here, uh, I'm translating it from German, please be aware that your disembarkation goes, and then it's in like bold print, directly from your cabin to the gangway, which I, best, I guess what they mean is when it's time to go you're going there isn't uh, any visiting the buffet or visiting the shops or anything like that again at 9 50 it's time to hit the road jack i thought i saw something here that said what time breakfast and all that is i'll have to find it our day began as usual with a breakfast in the buffet and Speaking of food, I will be doing a video about the buffet service here on board, also about the main dining room. They might end up being the same video or I might not actually do an extra video about the main dining room because we only ate there for one meal, which was last night. Tonight we went to the buffet. So we did get a breakfast, a lunch, and a dinner in the buffet. And I have a good impression of everything that was offered at least through the course of one day in the buffet. But one highlight of today was we went to afternoon tea. And this is gonna surprise some of you because I studied in London for a half a year and the company I used to work for sent me to London for work once a year, but I've never had a proper afternoon tea. Until today, here on the Queen Mary, the basic afternoon tea here on board happens in what's called the Queen's Room, which is actually like the ballroom dancing area, which is a very large, very majestically appointed room towards the back of the ship. If you wanna make a drinking game out of these Queen Mary 2 videos, then take a drink every time I say the word majestic. There's a very large room with a dance floor and a stage towards the back of the ship. It's called the Queen's Room. That is where afternoon tea was. And what afternoon tea is, uh, you know, what is it called? Churrascaria, where you sit in a restaurant and the the servers come around with different kinds of meats and like chop it onto your plate. Afternoon tea is very similar to that, but it's with little sandwiches, desserts, and scones. They just kept coming around with a new selection of cucumber sandwiches, chicken sandwiches, roast beef sandwiches, cakes, cookies, scones. The scones that they brought, they were freshly baked scones. They smelled so good. I wish you could smell them right now. I'm remembering what they smell like and my mouth is watering. It was it was a really nice afternoon thing, but you know, after you've had breakfast and then lunch and then at three o'clock afternoon tea with all these snacks and then dinner again at seven, eight o'clock in the evening, it's a lot. It's a lot of food. I don't think that I lost any weight on this two night cruise, but that wasn't my goal anyways. Tonight was the gala night and I wanted to show you, oh, you know what? I put that in my suitcase already. One of the things I was concerned about before this cruise was what the 
and what the dress code was going to be like and how strict it was going to be and we had two nights here on board and in the information that we got in our cabin like i said the the one that i need i i know i already put it in my suitcase which is gone but it had a description of what you can wear wear on board and so if you aren't willing to put on a suit and tie or a tuxedo or a evening dress or a I think they called it a smart pantsuit for the ladies you still can go out and enjoy things on board but it's not the whole ship so there is sort of a, a system that they have and if you're not uh, interested in getting dressed to the nines at night then there are certain areas of the ship where you basically won't be welcome that's how they do it here on board. I don't need that. It's not something that I look forward to. It's not something that I would feel like I needed to have this before I decided which cruise I was going to cruise on again. So that aspect of the Cunard experience is something that does not appeal to me, but I know that it appeals to a lot of other people and that's fine. And tonight was the black and black and white gala night and one of the special things about black and white night is in uh, some of the bars they had these two special drinks and one of them was a black Mai Tai which is what uh, we had for our pre-dinner drink and as far as Mai Tais go it didn't necessarily taste like a Mai Tai but the presentation was really good and it was a very tasty drink and it had a little bit of a kick to it as well as a beautiful smoky presentation spent a little bit of time in the casino like I said we went to the buffet for dinner and I can tell you you know my impression of this cruise and this cruise line is only coming from basically a day and a half on board so i'm definitely not an expert about what it's like to really cruise on the queen mary too but as far as the buffet goes for dinner the selection is a it's definitely much smaller than lunch and as far as meat-free option goes there really aren't a lot of meat-free options for dinner in the buffet. Let me phrase it this way. There were not a lot of meat-free options for dinner this evening. There was basically like potatoes, cheese, and salad. And I'm cool with the cheese plate, but if we were going to be on the ship for longer than two nights, the selection that they had in the buffet this evening would get kind of difficult. And you know, Marcus and I are, don't necessarily need to go to the main dining room every night. We prefer <coughs> cruise lines like Royal Caribbean and celebrity where they have a large buffet selection in the evening and there are changing options every night. There was no big production show in the theater this evening. There was a cover band that did covers of like the Moody Blues, I think Crosby, Stills and Nash, sort of that genre. We stuck our heads in for a couple minutes and decided to spend more time in the casino than in the theater. and. I don't know if I mentioned this yet, but the ship also has a planetarium. So the planetarium is also like a theater. So not only do they have the main theater where the musical shows and the musical acts are, they also have the Queen's Room, which is also set up like a theater with a huge dance floor. And the planetarium is this very beautiful room that is also a theater setting where they, at least from the information that we had in the cabin, they didn't even use it as a planetarium on these two days. It was used for seminars and speeches and lectures, basically. And just a really beautiful space. One, one unfortunate thing about it is when we walked through there this evening, we noticed there's some chairs that are broken and they're like really broken. And the way that they have them blocked off. It just looks really ugly. Before we boarded the ship, I was expecting a very high level of service, of presentation, uh, a luxury level five star experience. And when you see things like this, I just think, okay, that's not really, that's not five star service. You know what I mean? There's a better way to do this. Not a reason to not cruise or to definitely cruise with Cunard again, but just for your expectations, if you are planning to cruise with the Queen Mary 2 or maybe with one of the other Cunard ships, uh, the, I feel like the, the way that they present themselves in advertisements and in the media is not necessarily 
even with the experience that we've had here on board. If you want to hear more about that, then watch the other videos I've done in this series. But until then, I think I need to go to bed. It's uh, shortly past midnight, or it's actually it's actually 0.30. We're going to try to get up early so we can watch some of the interesting scenery go by as we float down the Elbe River into Hamburg. Thank you for hanging out with me on this journey. I'm interested to get home now and get these videos online so we can start the discussion about what this experience was like. If it was uh, what you thought it was gonna be, you know how it was uh, compared to my expectations now. And I'm excited to read your comments and discuss it with you. I'm Morgan from the Very Unofficial Travel Guides. I'll see you soon. Good night.